Ever seen one of those signs in a bank or an airport, or maybe a theater, with an ear and the letter T by it? You know the ones I mean. This means that wherever you are has got a loop system installed, so you can switch your hearing aid over to the telecoil mode and pick up the sound from that loop. It's a really useful technology for people with hearing loss. Well, I say it's really useful, but the sound is often quite poor quality, systems tend to be poorly maintained, and they aren't always working. When they are, it's great. But now there's a new technology on the rise which could signal the end of loop systems forever, and it's called AuraCast. Loop systems have been around for years, and if you're a long-term hearing aid user, you'll know that when they're working, they can be really useful for hearing a sound source directly. The amount of times you switch over to your loop though and just get a load of static crackle because the system hasn't been switched on or it's broken, that can be quite high. The way loop systems work is that you have a loop made of copper wire around an area which creates a magnetic field. Sound is then transmitted through this magnetic field, then in your hearing aid you've got a telecoil which picks up the signal and converts it to audio. So it requires two things, a copper wire which creates a magnetic field which can be costly to install and needs maintaining and switching on and all that stuff, and then you need a telecoil in your hearing aid. Now, a telecoil itself isn't small, so as hearing aids have reduced in size, this is one feature that's gone out of fashion a bit. You can still find them occasionally, and the devices will be a little bit bigger. The Widex Allure, for instance, is a RIC device with a telecoil. And sometimes wireless devices which connect to hearing aids will have them too. So take the ReSound Multimic Plus. You get the benefit of a loop system without having the T-coil inside your hearing aid. It's in the device connected to the hearing aid. You get the picture. I think the long and short of it is the idea behind loop systems is great. Audio source direct to the listener. But the shortcomings are that it just isn't simple or good enough quality in day-to-day -day life to get it working efficiently to the extent that many people or places just don't bother with them. Enter AuraCast. AuraCast, put really simply, is the modern version of the same premise loop systems were built on. You get the sound from the source directly to the listener. But instead of a copper wire and a telecoil inside your hearing aid, it uses Bluetooth LE Audio. LE Audio is the very latest version of Bluetooth that's been designed exactly for this sort of thing. Better efficiency, lower delay, and crucially, it supports broadcast. A venue can broadcast an audio stream and people in range can join with compatible devices. Hearing aids, earbuds, headphones. This is really exciting. Why? Well, imagine you're in a theatre. You can try just listening normally, which would be fine if you're sitting close and the person next to you isn't munching a bag of crisps. But if you've got hearing loss or you're too far back so you can't see lips move, or maybe there are just terrible acoustics, it's really tricky. You can switch to the loop on your hearing aids if the theatre has one, if it's been maintained, if it's been switched on, and if you've got a telecoil. Or you can sometimes borrow a venue receiver, which is never quite as hygienic as you'd like, and it often comes with its own learning curve. Again, the quality with these is variable, but often pretty poor. With AuraCast, the idea is dead simple. The theatre broadcasts its audio. You join that broadcast with whatever device you have that is AuraCast compatible, so a pair of hearing aids or a pair of headphones maybe. And the sound is sent directly to your hearing aids at your level, really high quality, without the noise from the rest of the room. No borrowing equipment, no praying the loop is working, no crackling. And it gets better, because AuraCast can carry more than one stream at a time, so a venue could broadcast the main audio, plus an audio description track, plus a translation track, all in parallel. You just pick the stream that you want. It's a very sensible way to do accessibility because it's built into the system rather than bolted on as a bit of an afterthought. I can see this working in lots of different ways, like at a gym there might be five or six televisions all playing different programs, and you could just choose the audio from whichever TV you want to listen to. Or at an airport, you could select the broadcast that just gives you the information about your airline. There are endless possibilities really. Now before we all declare loop systems extinct, we just need to pause for one second. Because Horrorcast is rolling out, it's not everywhere yet, it's very early days. It's showing up in pockets, a few train stations, a few theatres, a few conference centres. And loops are not going to vanish overnight, partly because they're already installed and partly because not everyone's hearing aids are ready for Horrorcast today. 
This is very much the direction of travel, but as I said, we're in the early stages. So what do you need to know as someone with hearing loss or someone helping a family member by hearing aids? Well, there are three questions that matter. One, will my hearing aids be able to join Oracast broadcasts? Two, will my phone help me join them easily? And three, what should I buy now so I'm not stuck later? Let's tackle these one by one. First, the hearing aids. You will start seeing two phrases being used, Oracast enabled and Oracast ready. Enabled means it works now, in the real world, today, assuming that the venue is broadcasting and your phone supports joining. An example of hearing aids which are Oracast enabled are the Resound Vivias. Oracast works already on them. The accessories like their TV streamer and remote microphone connect via Oracast, it's working, and it works great. On the other hand, Oracast Ready usually means the hardware inside the hearing aid can do it, but the feature may be turned on later through firmware updates, or it may depend on other parts of the ecosystem catching up. That difference matters because Ready can be a brilliant thing, or it can be a promise that takes longer than you'd like. So if you're buying hearing aids and Oracast, it's important you ask for a clear answer. Can I use Oracast on these hearing aids this year in a public venue or with broadcasting devices? A good clinic will be comfortable answering those questions. Also, if you rely on loop systems today or you're in venues where loops are common, you want to think carefully before giving up telecoil access. Some hearing aids still include a telecoil, some don't. And as I mentioned, if yours don't, you can sometimes still use a separate receiver or accessory to access loop systems where needed. But don't assume Oracast will be available everywhere you go next month, and don't assume you'll never need a loop again. In the transition period, having both options is often the most practical approach. Now secondly, the phone. Oracast needs a controller device to help you find and select the broadcast. That device is usually your smartphone. So your hearing aids are doing the listening, but your phone is doing the choosing. Think of it like joining a Wi-Fi network. You don't pair with the router in the old fashioned sense, you select the network you want to join. Oracast works in a similar way, you select the broadcast that you want. In some setups you'll see a QR code at the venue, you scan it and it takes you straight to the right stream. That's a very good way to do it because it removes any friction, no hunting through menus, no guessing which stream is the one that you want. So. Just be mindful that if you're wanting to make use of Oracast, you're going to have to be comfortable using your phone alongside your hearing aids. Third, what to buy. Let's do this pragmatically because there's a lot of noise online. Here's the buying logic I would use. Buy hearing aids that solve your hearing problem first. If you're struggling in background noise, if speech is unclear, if family conversations are turning into a bit of a guessing game, the priority is a proper hearing assessment, a proper fitting and proper follow-ups and aftercare. Oracast will not rescue a poor fitting. It will not replace good verification. So get the fundamentals right. Then if you're buying new hearing aids now, choose a platform that supports Bluetooth LE audio and has a clear Oracast pathway. Ask specifically, is Oracast supported now or is it coming later? How will it be embedded? Will there be a cost for the update? What phones does it work with? If you can, choose hearing aids that keep access to existing assistive listening devices as well, especially if you spend time in places that still use loops. So who should be getting excited about Oracast right now? Well, if you're someone who regularly uses assistive listening devices in venues, theatres, places of worship, public transport, lecture halls, then you should definitely be getting excited about this. If you're someone who hates the faff of borrowing receivers or you've been burnt by loop systems that aren't maintained, you're exactly the person Oracast is designed for. If you mostly struggle in restaurants and social noise, Oracast is useful, but it's not the main fix. In that world, microphone strategy, fitting quality, and the right accessories usually makes a bigger difference day to day. Oracast is genuinely promising. It takes the core idea of the loop, utilizes new technologies, upgrading it into something that can be higher quality, easier to access, and simpler for venues to install and manage. But as with any new tech, the value is in how it behaves on a Friday night at the theatre, not in a press release. So be keeping your eyes peeled on its development. We're seeing it being integrated into things more and more. TVs have started coming with it. Every day I hear of another venue that's getting it installed, and before you know it, it will snowball and be a really huge advantage, especially to people with hearing loss.